In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with My brothers and sisters in Christ, happy 150th anniversary to all of us. Thank you so much for coming on this Saturday morning, the very day, March the 3rd, 150 years ago, when our Holy Father, Pope Pius IX, established the Diocese of Harrisburg. And in this Mass this morning, this joyful, solemn Mass, we give thanks for the abundance of God's blessings of the past, and with confident trust and faith, we place ourselves firmly in those provident hands of the Lord for today and for tomorrow. My brothers and sisters, today is a day of rejoicing, reflection, and rendering thanks to God. We give thanks for those who walked before us in faith, through whose witness to the gospel and personal sacrifices, we have received the faith of Jesus Christ. We give thanks for the parents who raised us to know the love of God. We give thanks for the religious sisters and the lay teachers who opened our eyes to God's work in the mystery of creation. We give thanks for the bishops, priests, and deacons whose selfless service shepherded us in the flock of the Lord. Today, as we offer our sacrifice of thanksgiving, the Lord also bestows upon us a unique outpouring of his mercy and grace through the bestowal of the apostolic blessing of Pope Francis. May we prepare our hearts to accept this gracious gift, if not for ourselves, then for those who have gone before us in faith. May we repent and confess our sins, worthily receive Holy Communion, and pray for the intercession of our Holy Father and the good of the entire church. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have, may, ble, may Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, the holy apostles Peter and Paul, and all the saints assist you with their merits and prayers. May the Almighty and merciful Lord forgive you and free you from all your sins. May he help you persevere in fruitful penance, good example, and sincere charity, and lead you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
O God, in the covenant of your Christ, you never cease to gather to yourself from all nations, a people growing together in unity through the Spirit. Grant, we pray, that your church, faithful to the mission entrusted to her, may continually go forward with the human family and always be the leaven and the soul of human society to renew it in Christ and transform it into the family of God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep, as a shepherd tends his flock. When he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered, when it was cloudy and dark. I will lead them from among the peoples and gather them from the foreign lands. I will bring them back to their own country and pasture them upon the mountains of Israel, in the lands, ravines, and all its inhabited places. In good pastures, I will pasture them and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing ground. There they shall lie down on good grazing ground, and in rich pastures shall they be pastured on the mountains of Israel. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. The word of the Lord.
Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pedro Hermanos, acérquense al Señor Jesús La piedra viva rechazada por los hombres Pero escogida y preciosa a los ojos de Dios Porque ustedes también son piedras vivas que van entrando en la edificación del templo espiritual para formar un sacerdocio santo des destinado a ofrecer sacrificios espirituales y agradables a Dios por medio de Jesucristo. Tengan presente que está escrito He aquí que pongo en Sion una piedra angular, escogida y preciosa. El que crea en ella no quedará defraudado. Dichoso pues ustedes los que han creído. En cambio, para aquellos que se negaron a creer, vale lo que dice la Escritura. La piedra que rechazaron los constructores ha llegado a ser la piedra angular y también tropiezo y roca de escándalo. Tropiezan en ella los que no creen en la palabra y esto se cumple un designo de Dios. Ustedes, por lo contrario, son estírpete elegida, sacerdocio real, nación consagrada a Dios y pueblo de su propiedad, para que proclame las obras maravillosas de aquel que los llamó de la tinieblas a la luz admirable. Palabra de Dios. Jesus raised his eyes toward heaven and prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, just as we are one. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. I pray not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, 
that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you loved them even as you loved me. The Gospel of the Lord. There is work to be done. There is work to be done, and it is the transcendent work of Jesus Christ. There is work to be done, and there is so little time for its doing. There are priestly souls to be sanctified in the Holy Spirit of God, flocks to be led, lost sheep to be found and rescued, little ones to be taught, youth to be trained, poor and sick and suffering to be befriended. There is Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, to be made known and loved and followed, and made to reign in the minds and wills of men in private and in public life in home and in family, in employer and in worker, in school, in leisure, in politics, in government, in every field of man's activity and experience. There is work to be done. It is the work of Christ, and only we can do it. These words were preached by the longest serving bishop of our diocese, Bishop George Leo Leach, on December the 16th, 1943. It was the occasion of the Ninth Synod of the Diocese of Harrisburg that corresponded with the conclusion of the 75th anniversary of the diocese. The work of that synod established statutes that regulated the life of our diocese for many decades and still impact the experience of parish life today. What is striking for me in Bishop Leach's message to the priests of the diocese is the strong emphasis he placed on the truth that the work of the gospel is urgent and necessary in the everyday life of all the members of the church. In 1943, the world was in the throes of the raging war that stole young men from families and parishes across the diocese and the nation. But in the midst of the anguish that the world, of that world scene, Bishop Leach pointed toward the transcendent work of Jesus Christ. Transcendent because the work of the gospel is never trapped in a single place or a period of time, but is like Christ himself for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Transcendent because the work of the gospel 
points us toward a goal, a purpose that far exceeds the limits of earthly life and worldly success. Transcendent because it encompasses you and me and every other person who today claims membership in the Church of Christ, daring to embrace that divine desire that we may be one as the Father and Son are one. The oneness of the church is a transcendent mark of Catholic identity. While it is not of this world, the church is a sign in this world. As with all signs, the church points beyond itself. It points beyond us toward Jesus Christ, toward the kingdom of God, toward a destiny for humanity that is beyond anything we could conjure up for ourselves. The opening prayer of this morning's Mass addressed the God who never ceases to gather to himself from all nations a people growing together in unity through the Spirit. This people the collect continues to pray, has been entrusted with a mission that inserts us into the heart of the human family. As the leaven and the soul of human society. For God is not content that merely some find oneness in Christ, but that all of humanity become the family of God through the power of renewal and transformation in Christ Jesus. This is our work, the transcendent work of evangelization and renewal so necessary and so urgent in every place and at every time. Our identity as the church here in South Central Pennsylvania comes with a mission the words of St. Peter are true for us. We are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people uniquely belonging to God. If we dare to accept that identity, then we cannot shirk the mission of announcing the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. For we cannot be the church without also doing the work of the church. This calls each of us, bishop, priest, deacon, religious, married, single, young adult, youth, and child, to a commitment towards something bigger than our own ambitions our own plans, our own agendas. For by the grace of baptism, we have been called to radiate the light of Jesus Christ into our world. This means reflecting the light of Christ in our homes, our family lives, our married lives, our friendships. It means carrying the light of Christ into our workplaces, our businesses, our politics. It means carrying the light of Christ into the marketplace and on the street corner. Whenever we encounter the one who is suffering because of prejudice and intolerance, the one who is ignored and unwanted by society, the one who suffers because of our corporate or political indifference, the one who has been told that they are not worthy of respect or love, to these people, and into these places, we must be the authentic church. We must do the work of the gospel. Doing a transcendent work does not give us any excuse to flee from the serious problems of the world, nor the thorny struggles of the church. Rather, it gives us a perspective to enter into the fray with a strength that does not originate 
in our human efforts, a wisdom that far exceeds our human ingenuity and a determination that is the fruit of faith-filled conviction. To be the church and accept the transcendent work of Jesus Christ as our own means to imitate the Good Shepherd as prophesied by Ezekiel. Here we learn that what concerns God must concern us as well. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. My brothers and sisters, there are many who have been scattered because it was cloudy and dark. In this anniversary year, it is not my intention to impose on our diocese some new program, a new series, a different mission. I intend for you and me simply and with a greater intensity to return to the truth of who we are, who we are called to be as the church in the world today. Our work has already been given to us by Christ, yet we know that there is much that challenges the undertaking of that work today. Some of the challenges to our work come from outside forces, the masses who have allowed themselves to be formed by a culture that rejects who we are and mocks what we believe. The insidious efforts of the evil one who seeks our downfall at every turn. The changing landscape of thinking and morality and values that conflict with what we hold most important. From these challenges, we must not hide, nor can we give in. These challenges urge us to a greater fidelity and integrity in living out the gospel communally and personally. Our challenges also come from within the church. When individuals have failed to be faithful and failed to integrate the gospel into their lives, we bear the signs of the sins of those who have been unfaithful, disfiguring the face of Christ, which should be mirrored by the church. We cannot undo the sins of the past, but we can and we must repent of them and never shortchange that work of reparation. The only credible witness to those who judge us harshly, who have been hurt by our corporate sins, who doubt our capacity for doing any good, is that you and I truly allow ourselves to be faithful to what Christ has made us to be. Our fidelity in living out the demands of the gospel in all their dimensions will witness to others the gospel's ageless power to shape and transform human lives and human society. What does this look like? We must set aside those barriers and tear down the walls that separate us from each other. We must become one, one in our desire to know, love, and serve Christ with every fiber of our being, one in our faithfulness to the teachings of Christ and his church, one in our common worship, one in our outreach to those who are in need, those who are marginalized, those who are suffering, those who are in any pain. We cannot bear light into the darkness of the world unless we are joined together with Christ. We cannot hope to have any impact if we work on our own, disengaged from one another. We are always stronger together, for we share a common source, a common history, a common call. Together, let us recommit ourselves to the work of the gospel and to the unity of our local church. As we revisit our history 
and retell the stories that inspire, the stories that bring smiles, and even the stories that might disturb us, we begin to see again a unity, a communion, forged by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the grace of Jesus Christ. These last 150 years have been guided by a power, a power that is bigger than any single one of us, greater than any bishop that ever shepherded the diocese, superior to any pastor who served in our parishes, higher than any religious who once taught in our schools, bigger than any one parishioner whose sacrifices built up our churches and institutions. This transcendent power still abides with us today. May it help us to go forth, to do our parts in shaping the future of the Diocese of Harrisburg and allowing the divine desire of the Father to fashion all into one family united by his Son. Bishop Leach ended his allocution 75 years ago with these words of sending. In my mind, they remain 75 years later, a fresh challenge for you and me. May they send us forth into this anniversary year to do the work that must be done today, tomorrow, and forever. Bishop Leach concluded, Go forth then, ambassadors of Christ, for you are sent by him into the world he has redeemed. Go forth to the work of Christ, which by his personal call and your willing oblation now claims your talents, your energy, and if need be, your very lives. Go with your example to show them the way, with your wisdom to teach them the truth, with your prudence to guide them, with your wealth of heavenly grace to make them saints. Go, and God speed you to your appointed work and your sure reward, for your names are written in heaven.
My brothers and sisters, the Lord calls us to be one in our love for each other and one in our gratitude for his many gifts. Let us also be one in our prayer for those in need of his mercy. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and for the Church of Christ throughout the Diocese of Harrisburg, may this anniversary year urge us to witness to the gospel with renewed vigor and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve the civil and public needs throughout our diocese, may they never lose sight of seeking the common good for all citizens and safeguarding freedom to worship in our commonwealth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have left the Catholic Church in times of darkness and difficulty, may we endeavor with God's grace to seek out the lost, bring back those who have strayed, and share Christ's healing with the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vo of vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, may the Lord raise up men and women from our diocese who will shepherd the church through humble service and steadfast love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle in the world today because of prejudice and violence, that peace and reconciliation may touch their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed bishops, priests, religious, and laity who have served the diocese, may those who have helped build up the church on earth be welcomed into the communion of saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you have called us to be a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own. Hear your children who cry out to you in need, through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with kindness the offerings we bring you, O Lord, and grant that your church, which came forth from the side of Christ as he slept on the cross, may ever draw her holiness from participation in this mystery, living by it always and responding worthily to her founder, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son, and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead in the state who alone have known, and in the death to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Patrick of Ireland, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by the sacrament of your Son, we implore you, O Lord, to make fruitful the work of your church, for by it you constantly reveal the fullness of the mystery of salvation to the poor, whom you have called to an honored place in your eternal kingdom through christ our lord Amen. please be seated for a moment celebrating this uh, 150th anniversary is a little bit like that rhyme about uh, a bride on the wedding day wearing something old something new something borrowed something blue i think that's how it goes uh, i've got a lot of things that are old and borrowed uh, that we're using today and it's part of the wonderful um, uh, legacy uh, from the archives of our diocese so the the final page of the program uh, comments on the uh, pectoral cross and the pastoral staff that i'm privilege to carry. I carried it four years ago in my installation, as did all of the recent bishops of the diocese, and also the sacred vessels, the chalice and the, the ciborium that was used at Mass. But one thing that's not in the program is the celebrant's chair that I'm privileged to occupy for this Mass. And this was the cathedra, the first chair of Bishop Jeremiah Shanahan, uh, the first bishop of the Diocese of uh, Harrisburg. We should all look so good at 150, huh? <laughs> uh, it's it's a, really a beautiful piece of furniture, but also a sacred furnishing uh, and a reminder of the establishment of, uh, of, of our diocese. When it leaves Holy Name of Jesus Church, uh, the plan is that it will be on display uh, in the lobby of the Cardinal Keeler Center during the anniversary year. So if you have a chance to admire it here or if you're passing through the Keeler Center, uh, you'll be able to see it uh, on display there during uh, the coming year of our 150th. The diocesan, I'd like to say a number of thank yous and, and there are many, I'd like to begin uh, with the, uh, the youth of our diocese who last evening, and I, I see faces who were able to be here last evening, on the vigil of our anniversary mass, uh, did a, a combination of the living rosary and the stations of the cross. And everyone who was here was deeply touched by uh, on a Lenten Friday, very appropriately, their depiction and portrayal of the uh, uh, passion uh, of, of our Lord and the sorrowful mysteries of the rosary and the magnificent music, uh, all of it live uh, and a, a beautiful act of worship uh, last evening. So I, I wanna take the opportunity to thank our Office for Youth and Young Adult Ministries, our Office of Worship for the Diocese, who worked hard with our young people to be able to uh, uh, present uh, last evening's vigil service. I, I wanna thank them in a very, very special way. Um, I want to thank the Diocesan 150th Planning Committee who prepared the service last evening and also today's uh, Mass uh, and the Festival of Foods that follows Mass uh, here uh, at Holy Name. Uh, in a very special way, Rob Williams and April Reifer uh, from the Office of Youth and Young Adult Ministries, Jackie Curran who arranged so many uh, ethnic groups who are represented both at the Mass and also at the uh, food for us afterwards and Hilary Smith and Mary Shriver, who serve on that committee, but did particularly important work in preparation to begin our anniversary year. 
Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the Office of Divine Worship from our diocese, Father Brahmer, who served as Master of Ceremonies this morning, who is the director of that office, and also Connie Egan, who works closely with Father. Father Ed Quinlan and all of the parishioners here at Holy Name of Jesus Parish who uh, graciously served as our host last evening and again uh, this morning. Uh, so for both of these days, Father Quinlan and your parish family, thank you so, so very much. Um, our uh, ecumenical and interfaith representatives who uh, honor us this morning uh, by your presence, thank you so very much for joining us for this Mass of Thanksgiving. Uh, our religious sisters who are here in the front and also throughout the congregation here, thank you for your presence. Thank you for the commitment of your communities, uh, such a, a, an essential part of the mission of our church for the women religious who have served here. And uh, thank you for representing all of those who've gone before you and thank you for your present and future ministries and commitments to the Diocese of Harrisburg. Our, um, uh, the bro my brother priests and the deacons of the diocese, uh, also deacon candidates and the wives of our deacons and candidates, thank you for your presence this morning. Everyone who participated today in, in this liturgy, the diocesan scola, uh, under the direction of Dr. Richard Skirpin and Evan Brickner, uh, the organist, and also the Capitol Brass, who uh, uh, accompanied the music today in our, in our sung prayer. Thank you all. Our seminarians and the assisting uh, masters of ceremonies, thank you. Uh, all the assisting deacons this morning, those who served this morning as greeters, uh, those who presented uh, the gifts from some of our uh, ethnic uh, groups, uh, our lectors, and the Knights of Columbus, uh, who are here, uh, as well as the members of the equestrian orders from Malta and the Holy Sepulcher. Thank you for your presence uh, this morning. I invite everyone, please join us uh, for the Festival of Food immediately following the Mass in the Old Church, which is just across the parking lot. So please come. There's a lot has been prepared by the different uh, ethnic groups of the diocese and enjoy some time of fraternity and good food. And please continue. I ask you to mark the anniversary year among your families and in the parishes, share the stories of the diocese to further the lasting remembrance uh, that we celebrate in gratitude to God for these 150 years. The Most Reverend Father, Ronald Gaynor, by the grace of God and the Apostolic See, Bishop of this Holy Church of Harrisburg, will the Apostolic Blessing, with a plenary indulgence, in the name of the Roman Pontiff, to all present who are truly penitent and have confessed their sins and received Holy Communion, pray to God for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Ronald, and for Holy Mother Church, and strive by holiness of life to walk in full communion with it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May your faithful people rejoice, we pray, O Lord, to be upheld by your right hand, and progressing in the Christian life, may they delight in good things, both now and in the time to come, through Christ our Lord. Through the intercession of the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. 